okay so this is going to be the first video in this series for discrete structures and in fact this is going to be the first video on this channel altogether so in this channel we're going to be focusing mostly on on covering academic courses and this particular course of discrete structures comes under TU, Trivuan University, under the major Computer Science and Information Technology, CSIT. And, you know, I aim to cover other courses in, in CSIT uh, on, on the days to come, but this is going to be my first uh, lecture series. And this particular video is going to be an introduction to the course. So we're going to be talking a little bit about discrete structures in general, and we'll be looking at the course contents in this video. I don't want you to worry too much about what we, you know, do as part of the actual video content, because, you know, whatever we go through in this video, we're going to be going through each topic in, in much greater detail anyway, right, in the upcoming videos. So this is not about, about, about learning all of these things, but kind of looking at what things we need to learn. Okay, so... Let's begin with uh, maybe the definition, why not, right? What does a discrete structure actually mean? And I think the right question to ask is discrete opposed to what? Opposed to what? And you'd have guessed that the answer is continuous. And yeah, that's right. So there are two kind of different distinct physical quantities in nature. So one is discrete one that can be quantized or divided into chunks and you know continuous quantities that cannot be quantized or divided into chunks right and what does this actually mean so let, let me give you a very typical example right so let me draw a, a a bowl of water not a very good drawing of a ball if you rate my drawing skills but anyway okay so here's a bowl of water and we want to ask a very typical question is the water in this ball a continuous quantity or a discrete quantity right and, and a pretty easy pick here right because i cannot say one water two water three water and therefore the the body of water is continuous right or to be more precise this 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 volume of water spreads continuously around this ball right so and and that is why we say this thing is continuous a molecule of water is not continuous right if i if i if i if i treat each molecule as its own entity then this definitely it's it's a discrete you know discrete entity but in in nature things mostly we find them continuous right you know except at the very you know atomic scale we, we still don't know how things are let us let us not go into those things too in, in too much but the you know continuous things now discrete things are those things that can actually be divided into chunks right and and let's say this is a rock i could have three rocks and and i have three discrete unit of of rocks right so one rock two rock three rocks so uh, this is is a discrete physical quantity right because if i could divide it into chunks the same argument could be hold for water. Why can't I divide water into one liter components and call it discrete, right? I could say one liter of water, one liter of, you know, an another segment of water and so on. And, and this would kind of be discrete, right? And yeah, you are allowed to, to do that. But ultimately, you know, the question is how much does it help us uh, when, when we are studying certain things, right? And, and how meaningful is, is a certain distinction? When I'm doing one liter of water, I'm, I'm kind of cheating, right? I'm, I'm doing the same thing as I did with rocks. And I'm saying one liter of water as, as separated in, in this container and one liter of sep water that is distinct from this one liter, right? So I'm, I'm crying, kind of creating a, the discrete line that is actually, you know, creating the distinction. And I don't want to be too philosophical here, but let's say, the rock I said was discrete, but if, if you think about the material that composes this rock, even this material is, is 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 continuously spread within the rock, right? The idea of discreteness only comes when when this chunk is considered separate from this chunk, right? So these uh, are, are so are, are generally discrete structures. You know, there's there's not much to it really, except looking into what these structures are, and and the individual discrete structures that we study are probably going to be more helpful than pondering on these things anyway, right? So the goal here is just to, to, to have you understand what a discrete structure is opposed to a continuous structure. Now, diving into the actual course content for CSIT, right? So we understand what discrete structures are, what different discrete structures do we need to, to learn as part of this, this course? So we start with the basic discrete structures, and this will include things like sets and uh, functions and sequences. 
and we'll go into these topics obviously in, in detail when we get into those videos but I want you to just observe a fact that all of these are discrete structures right if I, if I look into a set a set is a discrete structure because when I list a set the elements occur discreetly when I call a function yeah function is is obviously continuous too but uh, we are only talking about discrete functions in the scope of our subject here sequences by by nature sequences are discrete because each sequence uh, you know uh, item in a sequence is its own independent entity distinct from other items in the sequence right so a sequence in our sense would be uh, a discrete structure that we're interested in next we we study integers and matrices so integers and matrices and obviously a lot of things go inside of these topics and I was I just want you to see these are discrete structures too integers right it's easy to see why they are discrete and matrices too right a matrix is is a discrete quantity that you can compute in 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 a computing environment for example right and what do we actually learn about these things so we learn about different division algorithms right so there is uh uh there's the euclidean algorithm the extended euclidean algorithm and there are um, you know certain algorithms related to to modular arithmetic and certain rules so and there's there's going to be you know applications of matrices right and we're going to see how matrices are computed in in computers and and modern gpus and all that good stuff so integers and matrices is going to be about that the next uh, topic is going to be about logic and proof methods the favorite of mine and in this in this in this you know chapter we're just going to be talking about propositional logic and this is also called first order logic that you've already learned in in uh, digital logic to some extent in your first semester course and we're going to be you know learning different kind of proof methods right so we're going to be learning about direct proofs indirect proofs and you know proof by by contradiction and and you know there are some other proof methods like the prison hole principle and so on we're going to be looking at those proof methods we're going to be looking at mathematical induction next mathematical induction this is uh also a proof method to be honest but you know it's it deserves a separate topic because uh you know it's it's something on its own and uh uh following that we study different recurrence relations right so recurrence relation anything uh any 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 relation that describes a certain uh you know uh, entity based on previous entities sort of like a fibonacci sequence right in a fibonacci sequence i say a particular term is the sum of previous two terms right so this relation the relation between a and 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 the previous terms is said to be a recurrence relation again not to not to go into the details yet but you know we're going to be covering these things in in our chapters right and so counting and discrete probability counting and discrete probability right so the principle of counting the different rules associated to counting and you know the different sequences the binomial theorem pascal's triangles everything that's related to counting and uh distribution right probability distribution of course we're gonna, only going to be looking at discrete distributions those things will come over here and yeah discrete probability distributions this is going to be probability distributions this is going to be quite important so we're going to be looking at structures of probability that are discrete in nature right so <laughs> quite a straightforward definition but what i mean to say is you know let's say i want to to find the probability of 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 rain being between 10 and 20 millimeters tomorrow right so what is the probability of rain be being between 10 and 20 right and this is kind of like a continuous problem i am not interested in one particular value actually it's not actually even possible to to ask that question as you would see in in your probability and statistics course but uh, here my idea is this is a continuous domain probability question right what's the person a probability that the rain tomorrow is going to be between these two metrics and a discrete probability question would be what would be the probability of getting three heads if i were to make make let's say 10 you know coin flips right and you could see inherently that the nature of this probability problem is different from this right so the the, the probability you know uh, distributions and the and, and the structures that we're going to study here are just going to be the discrete ones so the next topic in line for us would be graphs and trees so graphs and trees and these are you know hierarchical data structures uh you know, maybe graphs are not always hierarchical but okay uh trees are and these are definitely non-linear right opposed to 
uh, linear data structures such as uh, stacks and arrays but obviously we'll be coming into these things in detail anyway so i don't want to go into too much of a detail so i don't want to make this video too long as well i just want to touch on the last topic in our course and that's going to be about uh, network flows right and this is uh, going to involve different types of, of flows right it's basically uh, a tool that allows us to model uh, you know flows of, of anything right and there are a couple of theorems that that and that you know help us calculate what the maximum flow is and and where we need to make a cut in in a given network diagram to 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 maximize or minimize the flow things like that right so we'll be you know talking about network flows as part of the final topic right so i think that's that pretty much an overview of of what our course is is gonna entail and and starting next video we'll be starting uh sets and the first chapter uh, sequentially functions and and so on so yeah that's it and before i let you go on this video i'm gonna give you a little bit of an introduction to myself uh since this is my very first youtube video so my name is Anjesh. Anjesh I live in Biratnagar in Nepal and I'm a computer engineer by profession. I graduated a few years back. After graduation, I worked two years in the Ministry of Social Development in, in Kosi province. I think it was called province one at that time. So Kosi province and uh, I taught actually this, this course of district structure and a few other courses for a couple of years in, in, in some colleges. CSIT colleges in Biratnagar so that that gives me the motivation to make these these videos and hopefully reach uh, a greater audience so I also am a freelancer I actually am not doing a teaching job or, or any other jobs at this moment I'm just a full-time freelancer and I work on Fiverr so if you are interested in checking out my Fiverr profile I'd leave a link in the description so do check that out and yeah that's too much about me I'll see you guys in the next video have a good day bye